Woof woof and thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Barking News in association with the Mad Dog News Network. The only place where the news is so old that it somehow becomes relevant again. In this week's top story, Keanu Reeves evades the clutches of Craven the Hunter. After rumours recently surfaced that Reeves had been approached to play Sergei Kravinov in an upcoming standalone movie, it's now being confirmed that the offer was turned down months ago. The Illuminati confirmed that the movie was to be a mashup of both Logan and Man on Fire, the criminally underrated 2004 Denzel Washington movie. However, with the John Wick actor having now turned it down, fans are hoping that dread actor Carl Urban will take on the role, but in the event that he also isn't available, I'll do it. Former MMA fighter turned actress Gina Carano has been let go from both Disney Studios and The Mandalorian Season 3. In a now deleted Instagram post, Carano voiced opinions that caused offence and were labelled as anti-Semitic. Following on from this, fans made the hashtag FireGinaCarano trend on Twitter. And then a spokesperson on behalf of Disney said that Gina Carano is not currently employed by Lucasfilms and there were no plans for her to be in the future. And in response to this, other fans made the hashtag CancelDisneyPlus trend, which some tweeters of the original hashtag said was childish. No word yet on if the character is due to be recast or if Cara June will be frozen in carbonite indefinitely. DC Comics announced this week that fans of Milestone will see the characters return digitally as early as the 26th of this month. Milestone Mondays is a new initiative launched by the comics publisher in the build up for new series for Static Shock. Hardware, Icon, and Rocket, all of which are due to lead their own six issue digital first series. Along with this, new concept art for Static's updated look accompanied the announcement. In this week's Snyder Cut news, a new trailer is due to debut, and depending on when this video gets uploaded, it may have already been released. In anticipation for this, teasers for the teaser trailer have been revealed. Although, as of this time, we haven't seen any teasers for the teasers of the teaser trailer. These include a shot of Henry Cavill's Superman in the black suit but without the CGI lip, a reveal of the inclusion of little known villain Granny Goodness and a much closer look at Darkseid. Don't let yourself get hyped into this one. Don't allow yourself to be hurt once again. Snyder also commented on the surprise inclusion of Jared Leto's Joker, with the reason behind this being, it seemed uncool to me that we would make it all the way through this incarnation of Batman and Joker without seeing them come together. There's now just over four weeks until it debuts on HBO Max and on whatever overpriced outlet will get it in the UK. It's at this point in the video that I'd like to ask you that if you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please make sure that you click that subscribe button and get your pulls all over that bell notification so that you can become a part of the Dog Pound. We've also got our social media links down below, along with Amazon affiliate links, which does greatly help the channel. Feel free to check out some of our other videos as well, and so that you can ensure that the lights stay on here, please share this video wherever you can. But for now, Let's jump back into the news. Looking to Marvel Comics now, a switch up in the roster is coming for the Guardians of the Galaxy. With the 13th issue of the ongoing Al Ewing series, flagship characters Star-Lord, Drax, Groot, Gamora and Nova will also be joined by the likes of Doctor Doom and Quasar. There's been little further detail that's been provided as of yet, nor an explanation as to how the long-time Fantastic Four foe Doctor Doom will integrate into the team. But with Heroes Reborn set to take place the month after this issue debuts in May, it's uncertain whether Doctor Doom will be a permanent fixture with the Guardians of the Galaxy, or if this will be like the time when Iron Man joined. It was also revealed this week by Marvel that a new ongoing Defenders series will debut in May, with Doctor Strange once again leading the charge. Although details were scarce, the cover for the first issue was also released, and you can see the Sorcerer Supreme standing next to the Masked Raider. There's also hints for other members that could be joining the team, such as the Hulk, Namor, the Silver Surfer, Beast, and Valkyrie, amongst a few others. However, fans of the street-level team of the same name may be disappointed as characters such as Daredevil, Iron Fist, or any of the other recent members of the Defenders couldn't be seen on the front cover. We'll provide more news on this evolving story as and when we receive it. Speaking of Iron Fist, details of the planned third series that no one seemed to ask for was detailed by lead actor Finn Jones. Speaking to Collider, Jones stated it was really going to be about Danny finally assuming the role of the Iron Fist, fully accomplished, fully charged up, and fully in control of his sh as well. It was going to be this amazing story with Danny and Ward off in foreign lands as a buddy storyline. He also commented that the third season would follow Colleen as she's trying to master her new powers. Ending the interview by stating that the season had so much promise, Jones seemed disappointed that it never came to fruition. Considering recent rumours that John Bernthal may get another chance to reprise his role of the Punisher, who knows if there's any more punch to the Iron Fist. In news that may make your nostalgic heart skip a beat, the Powerpuff Girls have had a live action TV pilot ordered by the CW. The original cartoon which I 
I uh, definitely didn't watch on a religious basis ended in 2005 after six seasons. Reports from Variety state that the new season will be about disillusioned 20-somethings who resent having lost their childhood to crime fighting. However, whether this planned pilot will be released to the public is unknown, and in light of this news we've received no weird on if a Sabrina the Middle-Aged Witch could also follow. Our final news story for this episode, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Kickstarter from Boom Studios concluded this week. It's safe to say that it obliterated its original goal of $50,000 as it ended at $804,000 in just one month. It finds itself as the fourth most successful comic book Kickstarter of all time, which completely throws a spanner at Mad Dog Comics' video from a few weeks ago. With a final total of 1,584 backers, the average pledged was $507.38. And that's all the news for this week, but it's time for me to pass you over to our weatherman, who's got the forecast of all the single issues that are coming out this week, along with the collected editions that you should be looking out for. Woof woof, yes that's right, it's me, the agitated puppy, and we are back once again to go through all the books that you should be looking out for this week. All these releases should be coming out on the 17th, and we're just going to start this off with DC Comics, as they are in week 7 of the Future State event, but it isn't showing any signs of slowing down. We've got a gale force amount of releases, so starting it off, you've got the next Batman number 4, you've got second issues of Nightwing, Wonder Woman, Superman Worlds of War, Catwoman, and Shazam. Some big, big titles there that you'll want to make sure that you own a lot of these are the last of the mini series that they're doing. The only other DC title that you really need to be looking out for is probably Tom King's Batman Catwoman issue 3. There isn't any black label titles that appear to be releasing this week, so there's not too much else that you need to worry about, but moving it over to the collected editions coming from DC now, we've got two omnibuses that are supposed to be released this week. The first one being Superman Batman Generations. Seems like this one may fall under the radar for a lot of people, but also it looks like Batgirl the New 52 Omnibus should be coming out this week. This is according to the previews catalogue, but some other outlets are saying that it should be released on March 3rd. So make sure that you keep an eye out for it, you don't want to miss out on that one. Next up, we're moving it over to Marvel, and the main event that they've got going on at the moment is a King and Black storyline, and there's quite a few titles that you might need to pick up. So the first one, quite obvious, you've got King and Black issue 4. But if we're being honest and you need to be told that to follow the King and Black storyline, you need to pick up King and Black issue 4, maybe I'm not enough help for you. But other titles that you need to pick up, some of which you may not have been aware were tie-ins, you've got Miles Morales Spider-Man issue 23, you've got Savage Avengers issue 18, and you've also got King and Black Planet of the Symbiotes issue 2. There's still a ton of other titles that are being released from Marvel this week, starting it off straight away, you've got Donny Cates' Thor issue 12, you've also got Captain America issue 27, you've got Cable issue 8, Guardians of the Galaxy issue 11 by Al Ewing, Iron Man issue 6, Black Widow issue 5, and you've also got some new series that are starting out. So you've got X-Men Legends issue number 1, and you've also got Immortal Hulk Flatline issue 1, but be aware this isn't written by Al Ewing like the main series. Looking at the collected editions from Marvel this week, you're going to want to make sure that you look out for this first one because it's a scorching hot title. It's the Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 4. Some other books that you might want to look out for, you've got the trade paperback of Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky Volume 5, and you've also got the complete collection of Captain America Heroes Reborn Volume 1. For you fans who are looking to branch into the epic area, the only one that's coming out this week is a reprint of Revenge of the Black Panther. But there is one Marvel Masterworks coming out this week that might be on your radar, and that's Howard the Duck Volume 1. It does look like only the DM variant's coming out this week, which seems like a bit of a weird decision, but I can only go off the information that I've got. Looking over to your image titles now, you've got the 11th issue of Jeff Lemire's Family Tree, you've got the second issue of Ha Ha, you've got the sixth issue of Chip Zdarsky's Stillwater from the Skybound Studios, and from the same department you've got the Walking Dead Deluxe issue 9. No big collected editions coming from Image this time, but it does look as if there's another sizable amount of reprinted trade paperbacks coming across. So if you're missing out on some Nailbiter, Fear Agent, maybe some of your Brubaker titles, there's a lot of reprints of those that are coming out in the trade paperback format this week. Looking to your other publishers now, the first one is going to be a big one, I've heard that it's already sold out once again of its first printing, but it's TMNT The Last Ronin Issue 2. Wait. It's only at issue 2. I swear if issue 1 came out in October, like, I've given birth in a shorter time than that. You've also got Power Rangers issue 4 from Boom Studios, you've got Young Hellboy The Hidden Land issue 1, you've got issue 16 of Kieran Gillen's Once and Future, and you've also got issue 78 of Zombie Tramp. And fun fact, the title of this book was inspired by the fourth ex-wife of our main news anchor over there. In terms of collected editions, the big one that you're going to want to look out for is the Blade of the Immortal Deluxe Edition Volume 2, but also 
also you've got Ragnarok Volume 3 from Walt Simerson. There's not really too much else that I think are coming out, but obviously you can check out the full list on previews online, but these are the hot tiles that I think might need to be on your radar. But that's everything from me for this week, hopefully I see you again at the next episode, but for now, stay safe, and remember, woof woof. Ah oh, damn. There you go Todd, a bet's a bet. No, no, I insist, I genuinely thought he was going to wet himself for a third week in a row. And with that, it's a wrap on this week's episode of Barkin News, and from everybody here at the Mad Dog News Network, we'd like to thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't like this video, why did you get this far? Make sure that you subscribe if you're new here, Mad Dog Comics has some very exciting videos coming out this week, along with a live stream this Friday the 19th of February. He's got some very exciting guests, so you'll want to make sure that you tune in live. But make sure that you check out our social media links, along with with our own Reddit page, r slash Mad Dog Comic Community. And why not treat yourself to a book and use one of our Amazon affiliate links down below. Make sure you share this video wherever you can and here are some of our other uploads that you may wish to check out. But until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, stay reading the best books that you can find, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof!